Hello and welcome. My name is Dan Nato, Application Engineer here for Saratech. Today I'm going to be talking about linear contact inside of FEMAP. So there's two types of contact that are supported inside of FEMAP with Simpson and Astra. The first one is glue contact. Glue contact acts as if the entities have coincident nodes. Now one of the nice things about glue contact is that you don't have to make sure that it meshes the line because in the background that's what it's doing. It's making sure that those entities are connected together as if they had coincident nodes. The other one is contact, also called linear contact. Linear contact is a surface-to-surface -surface contact, which allows entities to come into contact without those entities penetrating one another. Now, how do you set those things up inside of FEMAP? There is a connect pull-down window, and you can also do so in the model info tree under connections. Now, to define contact, you need to define a property, two regions, and a connector that connects those regions together using an associative property. Now, the first thing is the property. It's highly recommended that you start by selecting the defaults in the bottom left corner of this form. If you need to change any of these parameters inside here, please make sure you go ahead and you look in the quick reference guide to make sure that you are adjusting properties uh, that make sense and review and make sure that you understand what they are doing. Now, if you are using contact or glue, that option is changed in the upper right corner. So if you are specifying contact, make sure you go ahead and specify the contact type as contact. And if you're using glue, make sure you specify that as glue. And always remember to select that defaults. One thing that I did notice when you do select defaults is it does sometimes make the contact search distance a little too large. I highly recommend changing that to make sense for your case. Next thing you'll have to do is define the region. This is the region where the elements are going to be in contact or are going to be glued to other elements. Now you can go ahead and define these a couple different ways with you know geometry or elements. And then once you have defined these regions, you can go ahead and specify OK. Now one thing to keep in mind when you do have these contact regions is you need to make sure that their, their faces are, paid, are, are pointing towards each other. Now it's very easy to view them in the model info tree, right click them and you can reverse their directions. You can view their directions by using this Windows Show Entities, or you can toggle on with the highlighter command uh, for show normals. Now, one thing to keep in mind, this does not reverse the plate element normal direction. Next thing is the connector. The connector connects the target and the source together with a property. Now, you'll notice in the upper right uh, corner with the pictures, if you specify connections from A to B, it creates one contact pair. But if you go from C to D, it goes ahead and it creates four contact pairs. So remember, the region with the finer mesh should be the source. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you are creating these contact connectors, you might have to create more of these pairs than you would assume at the beginning. So don't create regions and connectors that are not tangent continuous. So make sure that they are tangent continuous. So in this case, you would go have you would have to create more than one pair. In the upper right corner, it's showing you we don't recommend that creating that as one pair. That would be three individual pairs. Now make sure you do not include the same elements in multiple regions. Now when you go ahead and solve this model you'll notice that it does have a contact convergence uh, window that pops open. And if you investigate the FO6 file, you'll notice that there is a section for contact face refinement. Now, make sure that contact is occurring if you define contact. Now, one thing when you look at your results, if you do not have these output vectors, contact has never occurred in your model. So be careful and make sure that you do have output vectors related to contact and check your FO6 file and make sure that contact did occur. So let's go ahead and open up FEMAP and go through a couple of these quickly. So here's a simple model. I have one set up as glued contact and the other one set up as linear contact. So it's just two plates on top of each other. And I have it constrained on the ends and I have a pressure load being applied to this top plate. So first thing, I went ahead and created a property for each, and each are just the defaults and I changed that search distance. Then I went ahead and created these regions, I'll just highlight it and I'll show you that show normals. So if you select, I have these uh, pointing opposite each other on each individual plate. 
and then I have a connector. So this one is showing my contact. I right click and I'll say edit. And notice that it's using the contact property and it's connecting, you know, from the top to the bottom. Now in this case, it doesn't make sense for me to edit the source and target, but it's easy to go ahead and uh, flip their directions because these have very similar mesh sizes. Okay, and then I have the same thing for the bottom. So this bottom plate is with glue contact and the top was linear contact. And I went ahead and solved this model and we can quickly look at our results. And this makes sense looking at your results is this plate that is glued together, they're acting as if they're one entity and they're moving together. Now where this entity is sliding along the other one, these are exaggerated uh, plots here, but you notice that it came into contact with the other one and the other one has moved as if it was in contact with it. Here's another simple example just to show some of those outputs. Here's just a, a plate that's on top of another plate and we went ahead and applied a load in this Y direction to this, this top region. And you'll notice that this section right here is in contact with the bottom plate based on the output vector that I'm looking at, which is contact pressure. So under my post-processing, we can go ahead and look at these output vectors. And you could even filter here for, for contact if that's what you wanted. So I can just go ahead and copy this, file same contact, and now you'll notice that I have these outputs. And I can go ahead and post-process uh, these output vectors that I wanted to. So contact traction in each direction if I wanted to plot them. You have your total contact force and your forces in your directions. And you have your initial contact separation. So how far apart were they at the beginning? And then you have your deformed contact separation as well. So please make sure if you do have contact that you have these outputs that have the ability to be posted. Now we haven't went into discussion of some of those properties. And like I said, if you want to edit any of those properties, please review the quick reference guide and make sure that you understand some of these uh, options that you're going to head and uh, specify. So I recommend hitting this default spot. But one of the properties that I'll mention quickly is this initial penetration. Right now I have it set to calculate it. So here's my model and I have it set to calculate it and we go ahead and solve. So this entity was actually press fit. So this center section was actually larger than the entities that were into it. So it already was in penetration. So under this property uh, for the first one, it calculated that initial penetration. So it knew the value that it was over. And you'll notice in this case, I had a minimum contact search distance and it was negative. So it searched in both directions. So the next one was set up with zero penetration. So what this one does is it calculates the initial penetration and it zeroes them out. So it's basically saying it's no longer in penetration. So now if I go ahead and look at those results, you notice that it looks the same as before. Well, that's because I told the solver, hey, ignore that thing already penetrating and set that out to be zero again. And then the last option that you could specify in here is you would zero all gaps and you would stop all penetrations. And that will look very similar to the other case with nothing that has happened because it's no longer penetrating. So those are some of the options that you can go ahead and change under your properties. Now, by selecting the defaults, it also turns on shell offset to include shell thickness, includes half the shell thickness. But if you don't want to include that, you can toggle that on and off. And it also includes offset if you do have offsets as well. So let's look at a couple other that, that I have here. So here's a model where I have dissimilar meshes. It's not connected together. And we went ahead and created connections. I went, this time I used glue. I used the defaults. And I specified a search distance that made sense in my case. It's very, very small. They're basically connected right now. And my region was from my tet mesh down to my hex mesh. And I have a connector that connects from one to the other. And then when you go ahead and you look at results, you notice this, that this entity moves as if they're connected as one entity. Now, in reality, I don't recommend always using glue contact. I recommend trying to, you know, get coincident nodes if you can, especially if it's, if it's not hard to do. But this is just showing you that, you know, you see that the stress is going from one to the other. And you could go ahead and, you know, post other type of plots if you wanted to, uh, like a, you know, isosurface plot. And you'll see that the load is going from one into the other. 
So that would be a glue contact example. Another is you have two entities that are coming in together. Now this is pretty easy to, to, to set up without glue, but maybe you wanted to run a quick scenario uh, without modeling it. You could go ahead and set up, uh, this is face to edge contact. You can look at this thing uh, deforming and you can look at you know stress plots as well. So you'll see that it's acting as if these entities were, were connected together um, in that case. And then here's another example, same concept. Uh, you have a plate connected to a solid. Now, even if you had coincident you know, nodes along here, you, you would have some issues with modeling um, because it would, would be under constraint. So the answer to how to fix that would be to use glue contacts, create some sort of MPC, or maybe you could even embed this plate into the solid to go ahead and capture those rotations. And we can go ahead and look, and this thing transfers the load um, from one to the other. Now, we're going to go ahead and post-process this. Let's toggle off a few of these things. Now you see I'm only posting the plate, so you can toggle on additional vectors here, and maybe you want it to toggle on you know, solid vomit stress as well, and now we can plot them all. It's just so small compared to the rest of the structure, it's hard to tell. So hopefully the quick overview of uh, setting up contact using glue and or linear contact was helpful. Thank you for your time. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com events.